Welcome, everyone. On this Sunday before Remembrance Day, we gather to remember and to give thanks. To give thanks for those who've sacrificed so much, even their lives, in service of a better world. We gather to pray for a world without war. We gather to pray that peace will find a home in every heart. And we gather to affirm our commitment to follow the one who walks the way of peace. As we light the Christ candle, we're reminded of the words of Jesus when he said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Our opening hymn is number 359, He Came Singing Love. time of remembrance, our thoughts turn to the violence, fear, and pain of war. Come gently into our worship this day, that we may know your peace. Not the peace of violence ignored, fear repressed, but the true peace of evil confronted, injustice exposed, and reconciliation achieved. We pray in the name of the Prince of Peace. Amen. I've uh, set our scripture passage to music this morning. The passage is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. We know these verses as the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, 
he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Well, what a week this has been. I'm recording this worship video on Saturday morning, and the outcome of the election in the United States still hasn't been announced. But I think even in Canada, we've all been holding our collective breath since Tuesday, waiting for the results. I've checked the news headlines more often than I want to admit, praying for the people uh, of the United States and hoping to hear that Joe Biden will be the next president. And it's got me thinking of the values that are important to me, that are important to us as followers of the one who said, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who hunger for righteousness, the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. God loves everyone. But to God, these people are especially important, and they even need an extra blessing. And in the context of this election, this very important election, I'm reminded of all the vulnerable people, and I am reminded of how every day we embody our beliefs with what we do, what we say, who we listen to, who we vote for, who we bless. I find that Remi Remembrance Day gets me thinking about similar things. Although I admit that some of my thoughts are, are really contradictory, our tradition often has been uncomfortable with the use of force to solve the problems of the world, emphasizing instead peacemaking and peacemakers. But like I said, we're embodied beings, all of us. We, we live in a particular time and place, a context. And every day, I really want to be a peacemaker, a person of peace. But I don't know what I would do if that became an impossible path. The last four years with such an unstable person as President of the United States have made me realize how naive I've been about the stability of human rights and democracy even in North America. I would like to be a peacemaker, but many times in history people have had to make difficult 
decisions to protect human rights and to stop the march of evil. Yes, I guess I have con contradictory beliefs about war and justice and peace and sacrifice, and I guess they'll have to remain unresolved for today. And so we bring all of our emotions and thoughts to this time and place on the Sunday before Remembrance Day. And in the context of our faith, we hold those we remember today in the light of God's love, surrounding their memory with gratitude and with our humility. This image of holding someone in the light of God's love has always been a powerful image for me. And it's one that came to mind in a new way when I was preparing for today's worship, as I learned of a solemn and beautiful event that takes place in the Canadian War Museum's Memorial Hall. So in the Memorial Hall, you'll find the headstone from the grave of Canada's unknown soldier. And by architectural design, on November 11th, at exactly 11 a.m., weather permitting, a beam of sunlight shines through a single window and perfectly frames the headstone from the grave of Canada's unknown soldier. Of course, my personal interpretation of this is that it's the light of God shining through that window, holding those we remember in the light, a beam of sunlight, a ray of light, a sign of blessing and hope, and the reminder of a new day. We are going to have an act of remembrance now so that we can take a few moments to remember, to give thanks, and in a formal way to lift our prayers for real and lasting peace.
And these words of remembrance. Eternal rest grant unto them, O God, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the righteous, through your great mercy, rest in peace. Amen. Please pray with me. O God, we lift our hearts in thanksgiving to you for the lives and sacrifices of our veterans and their families. We hold in the light of your love our troops and their families who continue to make sacrifices even now. And we pray for all who have given their lives for liberty and justice, for all who returned from the horrors of war, and for all who served on our own shores, for all who stayed behind and waited, wrote letters and prayed, and for all who worked and continue to work to heal physical, mental, and spiritual wounds. We lift our hearts to you, O God, and pray for your guidance. Assist us as we work for peace in our homes, our communities, our churches, and our world. May our lives be lived with love, caring, generosity, and mercy. We ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Before we go, I have a couple of announcements to make. We had an official board meeting at the end of last month where some decisions were made moving forward with the life and work of our church. So this week I'll have a newsletter ready to email or mail to folks in the congregation with some of the decisions that were made at the board meeting, some updates about our pandemic plans and our finances. The next announcement is that I would like to invite you to participate again this year in the Angel Gift Toys um, for the Elsa Cregan Area Food Bank. So we are collecting Christmas toys again for the children who are uh, among the families served by the Elsa Cregan Area Food Bank. And the gifts are to be unwrapped and dropped off at Ruth and Cliff's home to be delivered to the food bank on December 7th. So that's the deadline for those gifts. And there'll be more about this in the newsletter. And the last announcement is, um, well, it was an interesting process for me to get permission to use the photo of the headstone from the grave of Canada's unknown soldier. So I was communicating by email with the Director of Public Relations there. And she included an invitation to all of us to live stream this year's Remembrance Day observation at Memorial Hall. So the service starts on November 11th at 1040 a.m. And there is an email, um, not an email, I'm sorry, an, in, um, an internet link for the live stream worship service that, that, that you'll find in the credits or you'll find in the worship notes that I email you each Sunday. And so those are the announcements for today. And before you go, I would just like to offer this blessing. Go now in peace to love and serve God. And as you go, may the glory of God's goodness be revealed to you. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ take root in you. And may the inspiration of the Holy Spirit fill you with joy. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God serve.